So let's say you're going to fill up a pool, and this pool has a 20-foot diameter, and it's five feet deep. It's up on a hill, and the water is going to exit uh, the pipe that is delivering the water is going to exit 105 feet above the surface of the reservoir that is feeding the pump. So if we were going to sketch something like that, we'd basically say there's some sort of a basin uh, down here where the water exists now, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to pump that up to another little basin that's up on top of a hill, right? The pipe that's doing that has an exit point uh, you know, relative to the pump that's down here, it has that exit point that is 105 feet high. Okay, and we're going to fill this little, this little pool up with water up here. Uh, again, it's got a 20 foot diameter and five feet deep. Um, also, where the water exits, it's going to have a velocity of 2.8 meters per second. Okay, so right up here where the water is dumping out, right, that velocity where it comes out is going to be that 2.8 meters per second. Okay, let's see now. Uh, the other thing we know is that the cost of electricity uh, where we need to be powering the pump is 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And what we're trying to figure out is how much is it going to cost to power this pump uh, until the pool is filled up. All right, so where do you think we might want to start for a problem like this? Okay, I'll tell you what, a lot of times when we're doing problems like this, there's a big equation that we're going to be using in connection with the problem. And so I, my suggestion is, why don't we pull that equation out and uh, start looking at it to see what we know and what we don't know, right? That's sometimes a good place to start if you have a more complicated problem like this. Okay, so what, what equation do you think I might be referencing there? Okay, how about, how about this one right here, right? Efficiency is one of the things that we are given in this problem, and we have an equation for efficiency right here that includes some other things as well. Let's go ahead and start looking at that equation and see which things we might know, which things we might not. Okay? So, let's see now. 25, well, I'll just write it down. Okay? This efficiency is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared. Okay, plus the weight of the water that's delivered, okay, times the height, all this over VIT, or if you want to think of VIT, you can think of that as what? Okay, that's the amount of energy. Someone said number of joules, right? It's the amount of energy that is delivered. Why do you think I might want to state that differently and state it in terms of the amount of energy rather than something else? Okay, he says, because when you're thinking about efficiency, you're thinking about how much um, energy did I have to deliver uh, relative to how much it cost me, right? How much did I get? What you, my, what's my useful energy out and what's my required energy in? And so why don't I put down here, this is the amount of energy in. Okay, because if I can figure out my amount of energy in, what else can I do with that? Okay, kilowatt hours. Tell me about kilowatt hours. Remember, kilowatt hours is, you know, what's a watt? Actually, let's start with watt. Power, power is a rate of flow of energy, right? And so a kilowatt hour is uh, an amount of rate of flow of energy times time. And that gives you what? Rate times time gives you an amount, right? An amount of energy. So rather than a rate of flow of energy, it gives you an amount of energy. So if I can figure out this energy in, I can also figure out the amount of cost of that energy in, okay? 
So far, so good. Uh, now what? Okay. The mass. All right. So the amount of mass. Uh, where do I get that? Okay. I can figure out the amount of mass of water by doing what? Do I know how much volume of water I had to deliver? Okay. So the amount of mass of water that I have to deliver is just equal to the density of the water times what? Okay, and I'll just say density times volume. Rho is the letter we a lot of times use for density. Okay, so what does that look like? Okay, I don't know what the volume is yet, but I have enough information to get the volume. Where is that information? Okay, I have a swimming pool I'm filling up that has a 20 foot diameter and a five foot depth, right? That's the amount of volume of water that I need to deliver. From that, I can get the amount of mass that I must have needed to deliver, okay? So, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and do this. Let's say the density of water, we have an expression for that up here, right? Okay, what's the density of water? How about we do, uh, you know, we can do 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Does that sound good? Is that what the one you want to use, or do you want to use a gram per cubic centimeter? No, it's 200 Okay, you want to use kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, I, I'm okay with that. So 1,000 kilograms per cu cubic meter. times my volume. How do I find volume? Okay. Pi r squared gives you the area of the pool, or another way of expressing that same thing would be pi d, so uh, the diameter of the pool there being 20 feet, squared over 4. All right, that's another expression for the area. Um, the reason we can do that is, is that the diameter is uh, two times the radius, right? Well, that 2, if it was squared, would give you 4, and we're dividing that 4 back out in the same formula. So a lot of times I'll use the uh, expression of this that is in terms of diameter instead of radius. So that's the amount of area of the pool, and I multiply that by what? The height. All right. Now we have some issues here. Why do I have issues? Right now, my unit systems aren't going to play nice very well together right now. Uh, why is that? Okay. So let's see what we have that we might be able to make the meters play nice with my feet. All right. So I know here that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. All right. So that's one thing I can do. Does that help me at all? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I can... I know I'm going to have feet cubed in here, right? So let me actually get to inches first, right? So if I want to do uh, get to inches, I do 12 inches per foot, but I don't have just feet, I have feet cubed. So I need to cube that conversion. All right? So now I've got inches cubed. That doesn't necessarily help me a whole lot yet. What else do I need to do? go from inches to meters somehow, all right? Well, I know up here an inch is 2.54 centimeters, okay? So I can do in one inch, I have 2.54 centimeters. And that needs to be cubed, okay? Am I there yet? Not quite, because I need to go from centimeters to meters in order to cancel out the meters that I have down here. So what's my next move? Okay, there's a hundred centimeters in a meter, right? And I want to go two meters from centimeters. All right, and based on all of this stuff here, I should be able to get to the amount of mass of water that we have to move up to the top of the hill. 
all right? So let me go ahead and punch those in. All right, I've got 1,000 times, okay? In these parentheses here, I have uh, pi times uh, 20 squared over 4 times 5, okay? The next parenthesis I've got is 12 inches per foot, so I basically multiply by 12 cubed, all right, because that whole value is cubed. And then I've got this times 2.54, and that will be cubed. Then I've got this uh, times, okay, I can do this multiple ways. I'll just do it this way, 1 over 100, and then that value cubed. Okay, so now I should end up with a correct number of kilograms of water that I had to move up the hill, right? Uh, 44,470, 480, we'll just say, 44,480. Kilograms. All right, so how does that help me? Am I still missing anything in my major equation that I'm trying to use up here? This, you know, kind of central equation that I'm going to try to use. Okay, weight. But how do I get weight? I multiply by gravity, right? So in order to find weight, I take this 44, 480 kilograms and multiply it by 9.81 meter per second squared in order to get a value that's in newtons. Okay. So that is 436,349. 436,349 newtons. All right. What are we ready to do now? All right, I know this thing is 25% efficient. 25% is just 0.25. So that is going to be equal to one half of the mass, 44,480 kilograms, times the velocity squared. Okay, plus the amount of weight, which is 436,349 newtons times what? Okay, the height, the H that's referenced here is how far up did we need to move that water? And it's given over here with 105 feet, all right? Now, is that gonna make me any kind of issues? Why do you think that might make some issues for me? Okay, I've got feet mixed in with all these SI units. All right, what do you think I might want to do with those feet? Okay, maybe do something very similar to what I just did a second ago, only this time I don't need to cube everything. All right, so I go ahead and plug in that I've got uh, 12 inches per foot. Tell you what, a lot of times I'll change the color on these to make it obvious that I'm doing unit conversions. To 12 inches per foot um, times 2.54. Move this over a little bit. 2.54 uh, centimeters per inch. And then lastly, 100 centimeters in a meter. All right. And what do I divide all of this by? Okay. I divide it all by the amount of energy, right? That is actually what I'm trying to solve for. I know everything else. So I'm trying to get how much energy 
All right? So I'll just leave that as energy in. Okay? Now, I've got all this kind of big, nasty equation, and uh, it's not necessarily that hard for you to solve it out algebraically yourself, but it's a good opportunity for me to show you that you don't really need to do that necessarily when you have a, uh, a nice calculator. All right? So what you can do is you can just enter this equation just how you have it. 0.25 equals, all right? There's a little equal sign above this calc key right here for this calculator is going to be equal to one half okay, times 44480 uh, times 2.8 squared okay, plus 436349 times 105 times 12, times 2.54, divided by 100. All of this divided by, okay, we're going to need to put a variable in here so that we can solve for it. And the way you put a variable in is you hit alpha, and above the little parenthesis key right there, there's an x, okay? This is the equation we want to solve for x, so I just hit shift solve, all right? This is just a little background on the calculator. Um, when you're solving something, it uses a sophisticated guess and check kind of a method internally. It needs an initial guess in order to solve it. For this problem, it actually won't matter what your initial guess is, it just needs one. So we can just leave it what it is, and after it says, it prompts you here to solve for x, if you don't want to put in a new initial guess value at this stage, you just hit equals. All right? And it will solve. All right? So this gives you what? All right, five six five five seven zero nine nine. Okay, five six five five seven zero nine nine. Okay, units, joules is our energy that we need to put into the system. Okay, how do I find the cost of that energy? Okay, five six five five seven zero nine nine joules times, okay, times what? Twelve cents per kilowatt hour. All right. So a kilowatt hour is an equivalent type of unit to a joule, but we're going to need to actually show that to ourselves. So um, you know that that amount per kilowatt hour. I've got this number of you know equivalent things to kilowatt hours. Ultimately, what that means, I got to multiply by that twelve cents kilowatt hour. But now we need to make these units play nice together. So how do I do that? All right, I need to kind of make the joules uh, correspond with these in some way. What's a watt? All right, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just kind of start putting things in here. Let's first go from kilowatt to just watt. Right? So let's, if I put kilowatt up here, that's a thousand watts. That's easy enough, right? Okay, but then what? A watt is a joule per second. Okay? So what's my issue now with my seconds? Seconds and hours are not the same kind of time unit. So what else should I do? Okay, yeah, an hour 
is how many seconds? 3,600 seconds, okay? Which if you don't know that off the top of your head, it's fair enough to just say there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, so it's 60 times 60. That's where that 3,600 came from. All right, so what's my cost? All right, I'll take this value, which by the way, it naturally stores this into x, and so if I want to just use x, I can. But then I multiply by 0.12, um, and then divide by 1,000 times 3,600. All right, so a buck 88 or a buck 89 or so. Dollars. So I choose answer C. <laughs> All right, questions on that one? We good there? All right.